Grounded was released into early access in July 2020 and was initially planned to be fully released in about a year. It's now a year and a half later and the game is still not complete. The scope of the game is likely expanded as developers have been actively seeking suggestions from the community. While a lot has been added to the game, there is still more to come. In this video, I'm going to take a look at everything that is currently planned to be added and grounded and let you know if I think the game will be finished in 2022. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications to never miss any future videos and a special thank you to all my channel members, especially Grey Knight. You can become a channel member today for as little as $2 a month by clicking the join button below. Thanks again to all my channel members who help make videos like this possible. Let's get started. So this video is going to be broken up into three parts. First, we're going to look at what parts of the map need to be updated. Then we're going to look at the feature board on the Obsidian Grounded website. Then I'm going to talk about when I think each of the updates are going to come in the future. So first, looking at the map, you can see most of the map in the center is complete. Right now, the only parts of the bottom part of the map, so the middle and the bottom part of the map that have nothing on them are the deck. The deck just has nothing, but it does have tape up there, which means something is going to be added to the deck at some point in the future, most likely. Then, of course, we have the top northern part of the map and then over here on the right. So in the last couple updates, they have updated the entire left side of the map, so the western side of the map and the south southwest to the western side of the map, haze, trash heap, sandbox, picnic table. We all know those have been updated in the last two updates. So what's probably going to come next, in my opinion, is going to be the top left part of the map, which is going to be the shed area and the area up here where the grill is located. Now, of course, I think they're also going to update the sandbox because the sandbox doesn't seem to be finished. There's a cave down here that's blocked off that is clearly going to be opened up at some point, and the sandbox lab outpost really has nothing in it. It just has a single room. It's kind of like the haze lab before. The previous update, the Sherman Doom update, added the haze lab, and it just had a couple rooms in it, and then the hot and hazy update expanded it to where it was completely finished. I think that's probably what's going to happen in the sandbox. This lab outpost and then whatever this cave is down here will probably be expanded upon. But then we have this top left part, which is the shed. That's definitely going to get updated sooner rather than later because they have the terraforming going on under the shed. And that would make that would to me would make the most sense because typically when they start terraforming on the map, that's when they start. That's going to be coming at some point in the future. The northeastern part of the map, top right part of the map, is also completely empty right now, other than some placeholder grass, and you'll probably see some bees flying around. Now, I think there was a screenshot at some point or a video where the devs showed off inadvertently that there was a hedge plan for up here. So there's a chance we're going to get a second hedge up here in this top part of the map. And that is probably going to be coming. I can't imagine they're going to do all this in one update. This is probably going to be two updates because this is such a large part of the map. If they do, I'll be surprised. I'd be pleasantly surprised, but I just don't see them doing that. So this whole top area of the map's got to be updated. Then, of course, over here we have the upper koi pond. So down here is the normal koi pond. Up here is the upper koi pond. This is blocked off by the retaining wall stones, and there's also water in here. And this needs to be updated as well. There's also some grassy area up here that's kind of just empty right now. So there's just some placeholder grass. There might be some, I don't even know if there's insects up here. I don't think there are. But I think this koi pond up here is going to be updated at some point. And maybe they add a waterfall or something that this connects to this. And so we could have something like that. And then aside from that, and I talked about the deck already, there's speculation that the house might be updated at some point. We might be able to go into the house. I'm kind of on the fence about this. If they do do the house, that's probably going to be coming last. So I'm not sure if they're going to let us in there. If they do, maybe it's we just get into it briefly, and that's where we become unshrunk, if that's what happens in the story. So those are the parts of the map that need to be updated. Now, these are quite a lot of undertakings. I kind of think this is going to be broken up to at least three or four different updates. I can't imagine they're going to do this entire top part of the yard in a single update especially if it's coming in the first quarter of 2022. So we're looking at early 2022, either January, February, or maybe March. I'm kind of leaning towards February is most likely when I think it's going to be just because of the timing between the last couple updates and then because of the holidays, it's likely they're going to be working a little bit less, taking some time off and recharging for the 2022 new year. So I'm thinking probably like February for that update, but I can't imagine they do this entire part of the art up here. That'll probably be a separate update. So those are the map changes. Now let's take a look at the features board on the Grounded website to see what's being planned right now, what's in the works, and what's to come. So I'm on the Grounded Obsidian website, and this is the features board that you can find on there. And what you're going to see is this is broken up into a couple sections. Top section is going to be the most recent update, so the hot and hazy update. Anything in green is going to be already added to the game. Blue means it's in progress. Gray means it's in planning. We can skip over the hot and hazy update because we all know what was added in that. The next section is coming soon. It says these are approximately a few months off. Now, these seem to have been here for quite a while, so I don't know how soon these are coming. I, I'm i pretty sure these have been here for a while because I check this website pretty regularly to see if anything's changed. They say they're in progress, so they could be working on them. 
for additional quality of life improvements, the couple of things I thought they might be working on would be crafting multiple items at once. So for example, if you're crafting fiber bandages, you probably might want to craft 5, 10, 15 of them or whatever if you're going out on an adventure. So rather than having to click it and craft it 15 times, maybe you could just drag a slider over that gives you the ability to craft as many as you can or as many as you want, as long as you have the resources nearby. Another quality of life improvement, at least for me, would be status meters for different effects. So for example, I was testing out smoothies one day and I used the, I think it's gastro goo, the one that lets you go into the haze area. And I drank it, I didn't have a gas mask on and I didn't have fresh defense on. And I was just testing it out, wandering around in the haze area and I wasn't paying attention and I just ended up dying because my health went down and I wasn't paying any attention to it because there was no status bar telling me how long the effects for the smoothie were in, in effect. And I know you can just click over to the UI into your backpack area and it'll show you how much time's left to them into the stat on the status screen. But I think it will be great if we could actually have a bar or some type of indication on the screen showing when the effects are gonna wear off, even if it's just a meter that's running down. I don't think we should need to have a bunch of clocks on there, but if it was a meter running down or something that would just allow us to see that without having to go into the UI to find it out, I think that would be great. Now for the inventory management improvements, the number one thing I think that this that needs to be addressed here, and I'm sure they're aware of it, is the backpack doesn't get jumbled. So we're all aware that if you take stuff in and out of your backpack, you move stuff around, you add stuff, you craft stuff, your backpack just ends up every time you're opening it, it seems like things have moved around. And it becomes really frustrating for people like me who are kind of like partially OCD, who it's like, I like to have things in exactly the same spot. So I always have my weapons up in the top and I always have my food up at the top. And then I keep resources in different areas. I kind of like break them off so I know which ones are in light categories. I think that would be fantastic. Another thing would be auto defrag. So right now you can defrag your backpack. I'm not sure if you can defrag a chest. I don't think you can. I think you can only defrag a backpack. I could be wrong. But you can click a little button with defrag. I think it would be great if the backpack just automatically did that because why would you want to have the same resource in different stacks? That, I mean, I guess you could do that. Like I know people do that in Minecraft when they do auto sorters, but we don't have that in Grounded. So it probably makes sense just to auto defrag. And then the last but not least will be an auto sort button. So I started playing Stardew Valley recently. And one of the things I love about that is the management system for chests. So I can just throw all these things into a chest. I click one little button and it just auto sorts them by category. So let's say you put in some wood, stone, some acorns, you put in some food, and then you're, they're all over the place. Maybe you put in some ores, you just put them in randomly, and then you just click this little auto sort button and it puts them in nice, neat categories so you can see exactly where they are. That would be fantastic and grounded because I know after I go out and I'm hunting insects for a while or I'm gathering resources, I come back, I sit there and I spend probably an equal amount of time as I did gathering the resources, as I do putting them into the chat, the right chests and putting them in the right spots because if you just move them over there by just moving the whole stack, it just puts them in the first available slot. And a lot of times it puts them in, it just doesn't put them where you want them, right? So everybody manages their chest differently. You probably have them sorted differently. I think most people probably put things together. They don't just throw things in there randomly. An auto sort feature will be fantastic. Of course, it'll be optional. So if you don't want to auto sort, if you just want to put things where you want to put them and leave it a mess, that's fine. But auto sort button where you just click it and auto sorts everything will be fantastic. Next up, we have the plan section. So on the left side, you're gonna see the things that are in progress. And on the right side, you're gonna see the things that are not currently in progress. And then these say main features. So first up, we have the story act one. So we're pretty, we've been made aware of the fact that the entire story is not gonna be added till the game's finished. That's what, I've, that's what we've been told multiple times. That's what I've heard multiple times from dev live streams and from different places. Now, I do have some questions about this. Like for example, are the labs part of the story? Because we go around completing the labs, Burgle's in the game, he gives us quests, we kind of get all these tapes and everything. So I have to believe that they're part of the story. And maybe Act 1 is just completing all the labs, and that'll be finished sooner rather than later. We're not sure. And I guess we'll skip this for now. Graphic improvements options, I don't really have much to say for that. I mean, obviously, the game right now, in multiplayer, doesn't run that great for a lot of people. It does for some people, it doesn't for other people. So I think being able to change the graphics a little bit would definitely probably help with that. Although I'm not sure if it's just server issues or what, what's going on with the connection issues. But graphic options in general, I'm for that. Let us change everything possible and get it sorted out. Hopefully they'll also optimize them. Because like right now, if I'm recording a video or I'm streaming, I have to cap at 60 FPS with VSync on. Otherwise, the capture of the game just looks like a slideshow for some reason. But if I'm just playing by myself without recording or streaming, I can run uncapped and it runs exactly the same. So... It's just weird for that. I mean, that's not going to affect most people because most people are not recording their gameplay or streaming it. But I know the game doesn't run great for everybody, especially probably on older consoles. It does not run as good as it does on a newer console or on a newer PC. 
Next up, we have the fully completable story. So we just talked about that a minute ago. So I'm not sure beyond the labs, what else is there going to be to do? Are we going to get unshrunk? Things like that. That's the most logical thing. That's the most common thought is that at some point we're going to become unshrunk and go back to our normal selves, kind of like the Honey, I Shrunk the Kid story. So the fully completable story, it says it's a work in progress. So I'm assuming that some parts of the game that are right now are part of that. And then at some at the end of the once the game is finished, that'll be this will be included at the end so we can fully play it. Next up, we have additional crafting stations. So of course, in the hot and hazy update, we got some crafting stations. We got the smithing smithing station. In the previous update, the Shroom and Doom, we got the oven, the grinder, and those things allow us to make new things. So additional crafting stations, I think that would make sense. Of course, they're going to be armor upgrades. They let us upgrade weapons with the smithing station. I think the next logical thing, and almost surely we're going to be able to upgrade our armor in some way, whether it's adding the candy upgrades to it or some other type of upgrades, maybe status effects where we can't take damage from gas, or may, it, it could be any things, but I think we're almost surely going to be able to upgrade our armor which will boost the stats for it and also give us some type of status effects. I think it would make sense to have a level two workbench so that we can, we need that to craft the higher tier weapons. So right now you just get a workbench and then you can basically just craft anything you unlock. In many survival games, you have to either upgrade your workbench or get a higher level workbench in order to craft those weapons and tools and armor and stuff like that. So I think it would make sense for us to have to have a level two workbench or tier two workbench, which is unlocked later on. And maybe that would slow the progression through the game. I know not a lot of people don't like to hear that term, slow the progression. But in my opinion, we can blow through the game really quickly right now. And you can get to the tier three stuff in a matter of a couple of in like a couple of days playing the game. I know I had some people telling me recently in my stream that they started fresh after the hot and hazy update and hadn't played the game in a long time. So they didn't really know what was going on. And they just got through everything in like 10 to 15 hours. So I know the game's not fully complete yet. Maybe it'll be a 20 to 25 hour game, but you can honestly get to the good stuff way too fast. And they did address this by like putting the mint mace behind a, it's harder to get the mint mace now, whereas before you could get the mint mace really quickly. And it's also by the, honestly, by the time you get it, it's not like you pretty much don't even, I don't even use it that often. I just use the antlion greatsword. So I think it might make sense. Maybe the workbench that currently is in the game allows us to craft up to tier two. And then maybe they have a, a second level workbench that you would need to craft tier three and perhaps higher tier stuff. And then in addition to that, I think there's been mention of cosmetics being added. So being able to change our character's clothes. So if that actually comes, I think it would obviously make sense to have some type of cosmetic crafting station, whether it's a loom or something along those lines where we collect resources and we put them in that. And it just allows us to customize the kind of clothes we're wearing, the color of clothes we're wearing, et cetera. Next up, we're going to have the additional burger quest types. The only thing, the only kind of burger quest that I think would make sense right now, and let me know if you can think of any others down in the comments below, would be gather requests. So currently we have hunter quests, and I know a lot of games have hunter and gather requests. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of fetch quests where you just go get stuff for the sake of getting it. But if it's to unlock new things, to get raw science, to get things from burgle, I'm not okay with that, especially because it would encourage you to go explore different parts of the map because at least for me, I find myself, once I get a decent amount of resources, I end up just like staying in one spot on the map and I don't, there's there's just some places on the map you just don't really ever really need to go to right now. And of course, the game's still in development, so in the future, there might be reasons to go there. But there's just large swaths of the map where you just basically just could just never go to after you get the initial stuff from there. And I think it would make more sense if we got Burgle Quest where it was Gather Quest. Maybe it's go collect 10 berry chunks or go get 10 Koi Scales, something like that, bring them back to them, get the, get the raw science or get whatever you're going to get from them. And it would also help you discover things. So it makes sense from a progression standpoint if they came along at the same time as the hunters. So maybe the hunter is go find, ten, go kill 10 aphids and the gatherer quest is go find five aphid honeydew or something like that. So you would actually, they'd be tied together in some way. If you have any other ideas for different quests, like I said, let me know in the comments down below because I'm always interested in hearing what you guys think. Next up, we're going to have additional weapon types. Now there's a ton of different weapon types in the game right now. And honestly, if they didn't add any new weapons or any new weapon types, I'd be okay with that. But I think they're 100% going to add some type of unarmed weapon type. And in that, it's probably going to either be boxing gloves or some kind of spiked knuckles, brass knuckles. I don't want to say brass knuckles because there's not brass in the game. But I could definitely see them adding boxing gloves that are made out of the berry leather or some other resource. And then the spiked knuckles could be made out of some type. It could either be like larva spikes. It could be the antlion pincers. It could be a new insect that's coming out that would have spikes on it, something like that. So those will be additional weapon types I think that could be added. And then uh, there's been talk about dual wieldable weapons. I think that'd be cool. I don't know exactly which ones they could add. I mean, thinking of dual wieldable weapons, they could do dual wieldable swords, like maybe short swords or something, but we already have swords in the game. Maybe they could do katanas or size or 
nunchuck, something like that. But I definitely be okay with them adding some type of new weapon types like that. Over on the right side, we're going to see the things that are currently planned but not being worked on. Storage management, we kind of already touched on that when I talked about the inventory management. This would just be having things in chest and being able to auto sort them, I think. Also being able to pull things from chest when you're doing anything. Right now you can pull stuff from chest for doing certain things, but not for doing everything. I'm right off the top of my head, I can't think of, but I know there's situations where I'm trying to do something and the things in the chest, but I can't do it. Like you can auto craft stuff, but there's just certain things you can't do for, I can't remember exactly what they are, but that would be helpful. Actually, it's putting stuff onto the spinning wheel. So you can put, you can craft things and you can put things in the oven without actually having them in your inventory. But for some reason with like the spinning wheel, and I think the jerky racks, you actually have to have them in your inventory to put them on there. I think it'd be great if we could just pull them from our storage that's nearby. And pheromone control, I've talked about a couple times before. This was actually in creative mode during the public test server for the hot and hazy update, and it was removed. It didn't actually work. It didn't actually have a crafting recipe, but most likely what this is going to be for is going to be somehow to control the ants, whether it's making them your pets, keeping them away, making them do what you want to do, something along those lines. And we have the ant queen. The ant queen's been talked about a ton, so I don't think there's really much to talk about this other than the speculation where the ant queen's going to be. I was thinking the ant queen might be underneath the shed because there's a giant chasm down there. But other people have pointed out if termites are over there, and I did do a little bit of research after I did that initial thought about the ant queen, termites and ants don't like each other. So it might not make sense to have termites and ants that close to each other. So there's a chance the ant queen could be added somewhere else, maybe under the sandbox, under the sandcastle, where I initially thought they might add a centipede or something along lines, those lines. So maybe they make that more of the Black Ant Hill lab, or maybe that's just where the ant queen lives. Then we have higher tier armor, weapons, and tools. Now, personally, the tier three weapons in the game are currently overkill for me, at least. The tier three antlion greatsword, when you level it up to level seven, and specifically when you make it spicy, everybody knows this by now, it just tears through almost everything in the game. It makes everything trivial. Now, I know they've talked about the roly polies in the game are called sickly, and at some point they're not going to be sickly, or there's going to be non sickly versions of them. They're going to be much harder to kill, they're going to be much tougher, have more HP, do more damage. So at that point, it would make sense to add higher tier armors, tools, and weapons. I just hope the way they do it is they make the progression through it a little bit smoother, make it a little bit more challenging, because right now you can just get to tier three. If they had a tier four at some point in the future, I just don't want to be able to go get tier four stuff within the first like five to 10 hours of playing, because then once you get that stuff, you just don't even use the earlier tier stuff. And then you have all these weapons and armors that were added over time. When they were added, they were actually useful because there wasn't better stuff to use. But once you start adding more layers, uh, more levels and more upgradable levels of armor tools weapons gear along that of those lines you just end up making a lot of things just, you just nullify the use of them people just don't use them so i really want them to get that balance correct and i'm sure they're going to work on it because obsidian is known for doing rpgs they're working on a couple rpgs right now so i'm sure they're going to get that down next up we have insect pet enhancements now for this the things i was thinking was right now the pets don't really do anything besides you have to feed them and pet them and it's honestly really annoying and i know a lot of people want to pets but then you got to be careful what you wish for because now that we have pets, they have become, it's almost like having an infant child. You have to take care of them all the time. If you don't feed them, if you don't pet them and show them love, they just leave. Now, obviously a kid wouldn't do that, but you have to take care of them like that. It's like basically babysitting the pet. And I think it would be better if the pets would allow us, to, like, could we just have, could they have a bowl of food and we could put food in it that would feed them for like at least three days in game? I'd be happy with a week, honestly, but three games I'd be okay with. Three, day, three days in game, just because every time I have a pet, even though I have them on Aphid Island where they're just never going to, they're not going to be killed by anything and they're not going to be able to run away, I always forget that they're over there. I'm doing something across the map, doing something else. And by the time I go over there again, I just, they're, they're not my pets anymore. Then I have to retain them. And honestly, for the bonuses they give you right now, they're just not that great. So maybe they can give you a better bonus. That would make sense. Also, perhaps they could gather resources for you. I think it'd be great if you could actually get them especially if we get bigger pets like i'm thinking the next most logical pet would be a red worker ant if we could get red worker ants as a pet and we could tame them and have them go out and gather resources for us like maybe we just have them go get us aphid honeydew or maybe they go get us mushroom chunks or maybe they go get us grass pieces or something anything they can get they just go gather and bring it back to us or we could use them to pull our pallets because honestly right now while it's a fantastic feature and it's really convenient being able to move pallets like clear across the map without actually having to carry them all the way over there, doesn't really make that much sense. And the other day when I was watching the dev live stream, they did mention that they, I think they said they like, one of them said they liked the system in Valheim where you have to use the cart to move large amounts of resources because you'll become encumbered. 
I think that would that leads me to believe there's a chance that they're going to add something where maybe you have to have an insect or maybe you have to pull pull the pallet or put it on some kind of sled or something to pull it. That would be a fantastic idea. And then last but not least, if we just have to feed them le less frequently. So like putting in the food in the bowl or maybe we just have to feed them every three to five days. That would be great. Just make it so that they do something, they give us something, even if they're just there as a cosmetic thing, that we don't have to constantly be dealing with them and constantly be having to take care of them. And the last thing here on the plan list is going to be bird improvements, additional interactions. So right now the bird just, the crow flies back and forth between its points of interest that it lands on and it drops crow feathers in between. Guaranteed to drop on when it takes off and when it lands and then sometimes it drops on when it's flying over. I think what would be really cool is if we could actually have bird seeds to attract the bird for easier feather gathering. Imagine we could get bird seeds, collect them, craft them, something like that, and we could put them in a in some kind of bowl or something, and the bird would just come over and eat them. Now, of course, we don't want the bird to eat us, but I guess they could make the bird eat us, but I don't think that would make sense because although the koi fish can eat us, I could see that happening. So maybe you have to set up the bird feeder, and the bird eats, and then it leaves, and then you go get the feathers. That would be a cool thing. And then if the bird would eat insects. I mean, birds eat insects, right? They eat things. So I think it would be cool if the crow came down and just periodically like picked off an insect. It'd be really cool. Imagine you're mid-fight with like, I don't know, pick any kind of insect and then like a larva or something, and the bird just comes down and scoops it right out in front of you and takes it. That'd be a really cool interaction. Next section we have is for the future. And the main features over here, these all are currently planned, but apparently not being worked on. I don't know if I actually believe this because the first one on here is additional backyard environments. Now, as we know, the last couple updates we've been getting, well, at least the last update, we got a new backyard environment. That was the sandbox. So there's the sizzle effect. So these are definitely being worked on. I guess they're just, I guess they're still working on others or they have, they have others planned that they haven't actually started working on. So maybe it fits that why it's not actively being worked on. I think the most logical and the ones most talked about that would be coming would be some kind of cold biome because we have a hot biome. We have one that's got toxic, the toxic gas in the haze. We have the underwater biome. And I think the most logical one to be added next will be cold. Beyond that, I honestly don't know what else they could add. I mean, if you have any ideas for different biomes they could add or different environments, let me know in the comments down below. But I think a cold environment is probably going to be the most likely that gets added. And after that, I wouldn't, I don't even really know. Next up, we have additional creatures and insects. This has been talked about a ton in tons of videos. I've talked about it multiple times. So I'm going to kind of keep it brief here. In my opinion, I think obviously termites are coming. I think grasshoppers, praying mantises, and wasps will be most likely to come. I'd like to see centipedes. And then for creatures, the creature I would like to see, and I think would make the most sense, would be a squirrel. Because right now getting acorns is super easy. You can get so many acorns. They respawn every day. If you go over there every day, you can end up getting about a full stack of like 20 plus acorn tops. And you end up getting two to three stacks of acorn shells. And then of course you'll get the acorn bits on top of it. So it's an easy food source. You can make tons of, you can make the armor out of it. You can use it to make everything that's required to use the acorn parts, like ladders, the, what, what else is used? The acorn armor, the spinning wheel, the smoothie station. There's all these things that are made out of acorns. So having a squirrel have to drop them, kind of like how the crow feather, how the crow drops crow feathers, I think would be a better way of doing it. I'm not saying make it where you're like cr the acorns are impossible to get. Maybe they had a couple squirrels up into the tree, oak, oak tree, and the acorns just they, it drops acorns periodically. I think that would be a great feature, a creature to add. Next on the list is going to be weather. Weather's been talked about. Everyone would like to see weather. Now, since we're only like four centimeters tall, weather's got to be, they have to do, do, I know the reason this hasn't been added yet is because this is a really delicate balancing situation, right? If you add weather to the game, like let's say they had a rainstorm. When it rains outside and we're outside in a normal rainstorm, it's okay. We're normal sized human beings. Imagine you're only four centimeters tall and that rain starts coming down. You probably remember if you've seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, when the sprinkler turns on, there's just what it looks like they're getting destroyed by rain just pouring down on them. And it could, it ends up, I think it ends up knocking one of them out if I remember correctly, but it's like a devastating thing. It ends up flooding everything. So if they add rain, they really got to be careful with how it interacts with the world. Cause would you like them to add rain to the game? And then it could destroy all of your structures if they're not built out of strong stuff. I personally wouldn't mind that. I would think it would give incentive to, that other stronger stuff but i know a lot of people just like building for the sake of building and that might make a lot of people unhappy but in terms of weather they could add snow rain wind make it cloudy i think it'd be cool if they made it cloudy just cloudy and windy would be cool and even snow if it just snowed because snow would be less dangerous than the rain where the rain would just come in and flood everything it could just be like a light flurry or something like that just if it was like some kind of seasonal weather i think that'd be interesting even wind if you had wind you could use wind for some kind of wind power or Maybe you could travel across the yard faster. You could jump with your 
wider and fly further because it's windy. Next up, we have backyard changing events. So right now, the one backyard changing event that's in the game is you can shut off the haze, which will clear up the haze area. The poison gas will go away. But with that also means the infected insects and the strange spores will start spreading across the yard. Some people like it. Some people don't. There's no way of undoing it right now. So once you do it, it's, it's done. I do believe that's probably going to be part of the story where you have to do it to progress through the story. So if you did it, don't worry about it. Plus, you'll probably start over at some point in the future anyway. Other backyard changing events I could think of would be draining the pond, perhaps. Maybe we have to drain the pond and go down there and do something. I think that would be pretty cool. Also, flooding. I just talked about weather a minute ago. Imagine the garden hose turns on or something like that, and it just starts flooding. Maybe the sandbox fills up with water. Maybe there's other parts of the map that fill up with water. That could be something. And then other things, like they could just have the environment changing a little bit. Like the leaves could turn. The leaves could turn to like fall leaves and fall off the tree stuff like that maybe the tree has no leaves during the winter things like that but if you would think if you can think of any other backyard changing events that would be cool let me know in the comments down below additional crafting materials i don't really have much to say on that obviously every time they add new insects so the termites are probably going to drop termite parts or some type of resource to make new things um i don't know what else they could add they have bees in the game right now but there's no honey so it might make sense to add honey to the game for something that'd be a cool thing to cook with because right now the bees just drop nectar and they drop pollen so maybe they add honey but there's just, you never know what they're going to add. They could just add new types of grass. There are, right now, if you turn off the haze, you will see that the some of the tier two weeds do have these little spike balls on them that I can't remember what that, exactly what they're called. They're little spike, spike balls. So those were added to the game, but you can't currently harvest them. So maybe in the future, we'll be able to harvest those. Now we're getting onto the things that are most interesting to me, and that's the base blueprint. You're going to see a bunch of these over here. The first one's going to be power buildings. So this would mean that we can actually power our buildings so we could have lights to turn on and off. We could have things moving around. Maybe we have doors that automatically open and close. Maybe we get more traps because we're going to talk about these over here. We can probably just talk about these all in together. Then we can talk about this last. We got defenses over here. I 100% want more traps in the game because I really want them to add base raids back to the game. Base raids were in the game when the game first launched. They were, they were bugged out and they ended up removing them. So now our bases, the only time your base gets attacked, if you want to call it that, is when... Ants try to come get food from your house, or if an uh, if a aggressive insect chase you back to the house, they'll try to get to you. But other than that, your house your ba house is basically safe. I personally would love to see more traps added to the game, which would allow us to defend our base from insects trying to overtake it. But that's just me. Then we have framework for player generated gameplay. This is the thing that intrigues me the most because this would let me believe that the game's going to have much more longevity beyond just being the story mode. If we can create our own content, if we can create our own challenges, if we could create our own backyard, imagine like that, we could just manipulate the backyard or create our own things like that, create our own creatures, create our own scenarios. If they added base raids, maybe we could create custom raids for people, challenge people. That would add almost near like infinite gameplay because that's like, that's honestly the future of gaming is just creating the framework for the, for players to create stuff. Because when you have hundreds of thousands or millions of players, even if it's only hundreds or thousands of players, but if you get more than that, they're going to be able to come up with far more unique things than a small developer team, even though the developers do a fantastic job on the game. Higher tier structures. Right now, I've never actually tested it, whether or not the walls. I probably should do this at some point. Like, does a grass wall have, does the regular grass wall have less health than a stem wall, which has less health than a mushroom wall? I don't know. Personally, I think the higher tier structure that would make the most sense would be if they added wood to the game. They're adding termites. Termites like to eat wood. I think it would make sense if they added a tier three axe made out of a termite part where we could harvest wood and build wooden structures. So then the structure, the tier would go from just grass to sturdy to weed stem to mushroom to wood. And that would be the progression through where you have higher tier structures. So again, if they add the base rates to the game, or if you're just, maybe you could play PVP, something like that. You have some PVP player generated content where you have to attack someone else's base or rate it. Having that higher tier structure to be able to withstand more attacks and be able to withstand longer attacks be fantastic and then last up is going to be decorations right now they added chairs tables stuff like that there's just things that if you're building like for me personally building's not i'm not that in the building i like to do it but i do get bored of it eventually right now the only decorations we really have are pictures that we can put up there's some stuffed insects you can make but i think it would be cool if we could do things like if we could just place food on the table for a decoration or maybe you can place a book on the table something any of the kind of little decorations you could add that you would see in other crafting games would make sense the one we skipped over was more control over world options and settings. I don't really know what there's that much to say about that. Maybe if 
when they finish the game and they allow us to have our own generated content, or maybe they just give us more control over how the, the game works in the different modes. So perhaps that could be something like, okay, maybe I want to play on medium, but I don't want base rates, so I just turn that off. Maybe I don't want to have weather, so I just turn that off. Because I know a lot of games have where you can turn off like natural disasters and stuff like that. I think that would be fantastic. That would let everybody just be able to experience the game they want to play it, the way they want to enjoy the game. And it would let people that want to just play casually, play casually. People that want to play like a hardcore survival game, play hardcore. Maybe you can make the hunger and thirst go up faster. Maybe you can make less food, more insects, stuff like that. So I'm all for that. And the last thing I want to talk about down here is the future considerations we're looking into. They've talked about this a lot of times. That's dedicated servers. So I recently did a video on how does multiplayer work right now. And honestly, I was kind of surprised because the comments that I got from people led me to believe it wasn't just the issue of me being on the East Coast US and original Ryan, who I was playing with, being on the West Coast. I had really high ping throughout the entire game. There's three bars of ping. I had two bars of ping the entire game. And then periodically, it would spike up to three bars of ping where I couldn't really do anything. The reason that's a big issue is because that means the game's not, you're not seeing in the game with the, with the server seeing. So for example, I'd shoot an arrow at an insect and it would just disappear because the insect either wasn't there anymore. I don't know what was going on. I try to block tax for perfect blocks. My perfect blocks sometimes registered, sometimes they didn't, and I would just get hit. So right now, multiplayer definitely needs tons of optimization because I know a lot, some people have said it's okay, but I know I play with my kids in my house. It hasn't run okay. And other people have told me they played in the same house with whoever they're playing with on like high-end PCs and high-speed internet, and it doesn't run okay. So dedicated servers would alleviate that to some extent because a dedicated server is going to give you a strong connection to it especially if you can pick one that's located centrally between where everyone's playing so you're not going all over the place but it's just going to be dedicated instead of having to have somebody host the game on either their pc or their console so i'm all for dedicated servers so the last thing i want to talk about is when do i think the updates are going to come starting next year and what's going to come in those updates so i made a list of everything that i think is going to come and what I think is going to happen, obviously, in the next update, I think it's very likely that they're going to finish the sandbox and update the shed area. Now, there is a chance that they might, instead of doing the shed area, they could do the deck because the deck is in the southwestern part of the map, and they've already done most of the stuff in that. But personally, I think the deck's going to be held off for later on, especially if they let us in the house. So that's right now scheduled for early 2022. So I just put, I'm putting Q1 for that. I think it's probably going to be in February. I think that's the most logical place. I really don't think it's going to be January, and I really don't think it's going to be March, honestly. I really hope it comes in February because Fe March is just like really too late. If it does come in March, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it, but I'd much rather see it in February. And honestly, I'd be super surprised and happy if it came in January. Like I said, Sandbox shed updated in that. Second quarter, so we're looking at either April, May, June, probably like the April time frame, at probably the May time frame. We'll be looking at them updating the Northeast part of the map, adding the hedges they showed in one of the trailers before if they're still, if they're still planning on adding that along with the upper Koi Pond, which is on the eastern side of the map. That was the part that's that I said might have a waterfall. I think that would come sometime between April, May, and June. That would make the most sense. After that, we're looking at July, August, September, so the third quarter, 2022. I'm thinking that's where they finish the deck. And if they're going to let us in the house, they do whatever they're going to do in the house. And that's the point where the full story drops. So I'm currently thinking that by the end of, what would that be? What did I say? July, August, September? probably sometime August, September. So probably on the two year birthday of the game, it would be, the game would be, I don't wanna say fully finished, but the game would be fully playable. So you could play through the story. The deck's gonna be finished. The house is gonna be finished. The whole map's gonna be populated. They've cleaned it all up. And that would be in that time frame. And then after that, what I think that would be most, like this would be the most logical thing for them to do, would be to add base raids in the game and have the player created content and dedicated servers. So that'd be fourth quarter. I'd be thinking probably around the November timeframe. So either October, November, December, maybe I'm thinking most likely November where they could have base raids in the game, let us create our own stuff and then the dedicated servers. Now, of course, that stuff might get pushed out because base raids are kind of complicated. Maybe they break that up into different things. The player created content would be probably the most challenging thing in my opinion, because that would have to give us the tools what level do they give us? Like, do they let us play structures? Do they let us move things around? Can we terraform? Can we control insect spawns? There's just so much that could go into that. Like, do they just give us big full dev commands on everything? And we can just do whatever we want. So that's that's the only thing that I could see will be dragging it beyond 2022. And then dedicated servers, I think, are going to come, at the, honestly, at the end. But dedicated servers would not be a big deal. Now, of course, with dedicated servers, typically that means that you're going to have to pay for them. So... I'm not sure if people are aware. Normally when there's dedicated servers, 
Like, this isn't an online PvP game. We're not talking about a battle royale here or an arena shooter. This isn't Halo. It's not Fortnite. It's not game like Warzone or Apex Legends where they have servers that you play on. You're not going peer to peer. You're playing on servers. Actually, I don't even know. Halo might still be peer to peer. No, Halo servers. But that's where they have servers set up because they have a mass population of players playing a game. That's not what this is going to be. Dedicated servers is most likely going to be you can get a dedicated server through some kind of hosting server site. Now, they're not terribly expensive, but you do have to pay for them. And you pay for what you get. So the less you pay, the less features you're going to get. And you have to do your homework and figure it out. Because I did have a, I had a dedicated server for Valheim, but I spent probably a week or two researching every single different place that offered dedicated servers for Valheim before I settled on one. And it was pretty easy to set up. But honestly, does it? I don't know. This game might might require. It, it really depends on how the game plays out. If they let us have tons of player created content and we can play beyond the story mode, a dedicated server would make sense. Especially if we could have more players to the game, so we could have more than four. But if it's just going to be a full story mode, I don't know how much interest there would be in dedicated servers. So just keep that in mind with the dedicated servers that if they do add them, it's most likely going to be, it'll be available where we have to do it. And one thing they haven't talked about at all, as far as I know, and I didn't see it anywhere on their website, is will there be mod support? Because mod support will be fantastic for this game. I'd love to see mods out of the game. I'll probably do a whole video on mods that I think could be out of the game. But if they could give us full mod support where we could easily create mods, the easier you make it for people, the more people are going to make. And that'll also add longevity to the game, add more player-created content. Based on what we know is planned and the current rate of major updates, I think there's a good chance Grounded will be finished by the end of 2022, but it could also extend into early 2023. If the devs decide to incorporate more suggestions from the community or increase the scope of the game even more, it could take a little longer. Right now, I'd say I'm pretty confident we'll have a fully playable story mode by the end of 2022, but what do you think? Will ground be finished in 2022, or do you think it won't be ready until 2023? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, make sure to click the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. If you want to support the channel even more, you can become a member today for as little as $2 a month by clicking the join card on the screen now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.